thank you so much for joining me for another Women Crush Wednesday. Today we're going to talk about Maria Tallchief, America's first prima ballerina and the first Native American to hold that title. Number one, Elizabeth Marie Tallchief, known by her friends as Betty Marie, was born from a father who came from the Osage Nation and her mother who had Scotch-Irish descent. She was enrolled in dance classes by the age of three. She grew up in the Osage Nation, Fairfax, Oklahoma, and by the age of eight, her parents noticed that both she and her sister Marjorie were really advanced and loved dancing, and so they decided to move to Los Angeles so they could pursue their passion. Fact number two. Marie was invited to be part of the musical, presenting Lily Mars, which starred Judy Garland, and decided that the film life wasn't really for her. At the age of 17, she moved to New York and became part of Serge Durham's Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo. In the ballet company, Russian dancers often feuded with American dancers, and so a lot of American dancers decided to change their names to something a little bit more Russian sounding. She was encouraged to change her last name to Talcheva, and she completely disagreed, did not want to do that at all. So she changed her name slightly from Elizabeth Marie Talchief to Maria Talchief, and that's the name that she kept for the rest of her career. Within her first two months at the company, she appeared in over seven different ballets and was first ballerina Natalia Krasovska's understudy. Fact number three, her life and her career changed in a major way when famous choreographer George Balanchine joined the company. They had an immediate connection and he ended up writing a lot of parts specifically for her, so she quickly became a soloist at the company. In 1946, the duo were married, and in 1947, when her contract with Ballet Russe was over, she ended up flying to Paris and joining him, where he was asked to rebuild the Paris Opera Ballet after World War II. The French press ended up being delighted by her in a rather racist sort of way. They loved the fact that she had a Native American background and she would always be followed around by headlines such as, the daughter of the great Indian chief dances at the opera. She was known for her fiery, emotional, and technically precise style of dancing. Fact number four. In 1948, Marie and George returned to the U.S. They moved to New York City where she joined the New York City Ballet as the first prima ballerina. George ended up creating a lot of different dances for her that specifically catered to her speed and aggressive style of dancing, which actually ended up revolutionizing different styles of ballet. In one such performance, The Firebird, the New York Times ended up writing about Maria that she was asked to do everything except spin on her head, and she did it with complete and incomparable brilliance. Maria's skill and popularity continued to grow the company's reputation, and she would perform as many as eight times a week. In 1952, George and Maria actually had their marriage annulled, but they continued to grow together and to create amazing pieces together. She performed in everything from the Swan Lake to Orpheus. After she left the New York City Ballet in 1960, she joined the American Ballet Theater, where she was the first American to perform at the center of the ballet world, the Bolshoi Theater in Moscow. She also ended up performing in lots of different television shows throughout her career, including The Ed Sullivan Show. Fact number five. After a brief stint dancing with the Hamburg Ballet, Maria ended up retiring in 1966. She had remarried and she didn't want to dance past her prime. She ended up moving to Chicago where her new husband, Buzz Passion, lived and together they founded the Lyric Opera Ballet as well as the Chicago City Ballet. Maria received numerous awards throughout her life including the 1996 Kennedy Center Honor and is a part of the National Women's Hall of Fame. In 2012, unfortunately, she passed away, but she has uh, a huge legacy beyond just her ballet legacy. When she died in 2012, 
Her ballet legacy wasn't the only thing that she left behind. She stood very strongly and proudly with her Osage Nation ancestry and spoke out against the misconceptions about Native Americans. Thank you so much for joining me for another Woman Crush Wednesday, where we learned all about Maria Tallchief and her incredible impact on both the ballet world as well as her advocacy for Native Americans throughout the U.S. 